Hey everyone, here I am again with Jake's Metal Chat. This is episode 33. Uh, I had to remember that, and it's been a long bloody week. And I've uh, been a bit, you know, tired and whatnot recently. Couldn't come down with a headache or something. I know what you're thinking. Oh yeah, what I'm drinking. Is Tony Revel is black cherry cream, the black cherry cream soda, pale ale, and it's absolutely delicious. <clears throat> uh, keep my voice down because obviously somebody was would have gone to bed already. My, as probably a lot of you already know, I still live at home with a parent, so just uh. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, so I'm keeping my voice down until uh, I just keep my voice down so he can sleep, but he tends to sleep pretty um, soundly anyway. Uh, just checking, yeah, because I posted something on the uh, on a new fan group and part of called a Mortician Fan. So if you're a Mortician Fan, type Mortician Fans on Facebook and uh, join the page. And post your merch or band photos you might have on gigs you saw them back in the day with. And I'll let my guests in a minute. And I just want to also want to uh, say something as well. Rich Lips Lipscomb, Rich Lipscomb of Flesh Grind has recently passed away. When I saw that was a massive shock and and down the line I wanted to get him on here so I can chat to him about flesh grind and his time within the metal scene and all that sucks really doesn't it so I'm gonna refill my drink and Give him a big cheers. Thank you for your contributions within the metal scene. Uh, and he will be missed. Oh, and I'll just show my t-shirt quickly. It's grave miasma. Um, but rest in peace, Rich. He won't be forgotten. Condolences go out to his friends and family. And some of his friends will be the guys from Mortician, his former bandmates in Flesh Grind, just a bunch of different bands of course. So I'm going to now get a guest in and then we can get on with it and just hopefully I'll say something that, tra that wakes the other person up. Um, connecting audio. Hey Jake. All right, Fred. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Good. Um, is your camera working? I don't know. It doesn't look like it. Why is? Okay. There you yeah. go. Yes. There go. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, like the Black Sabbath shirt. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> good old uh, British metal there. Oh yeah. Even they can just call them a rock band, but a lot of people call them the first metal band, obviously. Yeah, I mean, for obvious reasons. Exactly. And uh, well, I've got got myself a beer ready for this. Nice, nice. It's not beer o'clock here yet, but not. It's always beer o'clock. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It's like yeah, Dave Ingram in Benediction says too. It's always beer o'clock. It's always beer o'clock. It, it, mm -hmm. David Ingram says it's beer o'clock. For, for crying out loud, it's beer o'clock. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's beer o'clock. Well, welcome to Jake's Metal Chat. This is episode 33. I just had to remember that. Eh? <laughs> so you are guest number 33. Nice. So uh, welcome. Uh, this man doesn't really need any productions, but I'm going to give him anyway. This is Fred. 
If you don't know who Fred is, he is the drummer for Dismember, one of the biggest bands to come out of the Swedish death metal scene, and one of my favourites, and I got to see him in 2019 at Scandinavia Death Fest, which was uh, absolutely fantastic. Twice in one, twice in one weekend. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. A lot of that fun. Was a lot of fun. I was just like, as soon as I saw it was posted on Facebook, I was just like, "Well, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Buying a ticket, booking flights to Sweden." Actually, my mate booked the flights. I paid him back for him. Luckily, he knew his way around Sweden because I didn't know where, didn't know anything in Sweden. So. I'd, some of my ba- some of my favorite bands are from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> there, we, that's and of course got a lot of culture and stuff there, which and it's just just a really yeah Stockholm itself is a really beautiful city. Yeah, it is. It is very beautiful, and uh, yeah, I'm, one of the questions I want to get out of the way is when the pandemic happened the first time around not the second time or the third time what the first time uh how are you coping with it i mean it's almost a year now i the, the weird thing was that we played in switzerland like in zurich in mid january and then i did some studio stuff and you know didn't do that much i had just um the venue I worked for had just shut down because the lease was up. So I was looking for new gigs, you know, like not in any particular big rush, but I was like working one venue still, but I was looking for more jobs, you know, just to keep the momentum going after losing that main gig. And then everything shut down as I was like, you know, visiting new venues and talk to the staff and see when I could start taking on shifts and everything. So that was like, it, it, you know, you kind of saw it coming in mm-hmm. a way, but also, you know, past times of like when we've had like Ebola outbreaks in the world and people start traveling into the US with Ebola, nothing has really been this dramatic. So the first couple of, you know, like from February into the beginning of March, I think the in New York City where, where we live, mm-hmm. it was kind of like, well, We'll see. Maybe it's not going to be that bad, you know. But then when the the cases started ticking up, and I remember I was at this venue. A friend of mine who was the general manager there, he was uh, hosting me, and I was going through a sound check, just checking out how they work there and everything. And after sound check, sound check was done. He came out to me. He was like, "Sorry, man. I, you know what? We have to close down. We can't have the show." Jeez. I was like, "What? You know, on the day it was like a Wednesday night or something." And I think that was <laughs> March. Yeah, March like. 10th or something like that and everything suddenly shut down all the small venues in new york city just shut down crazy yeah so that that was it was a big kind of a you know it was i was in a little bit of a shock i i remember driving home and talking to my wife i was like we got i I didn't you know this new job i'm supposed to start like now we we got shut down everything shut shutting down two days later my 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 regular venue that I still work for, they shut down. That's a little bit of a bigger venue in the city. They shut down that Friday. I was, would have supposed to work, and that whole weekend was weird because we took a walk. Uh, me and my wife, we were out walking, and we were like, people were out, like nothing had happened. And you know, for us, it was kind of like a, it was weird. We were trying to stay out of people's way and trying to, you know, we started not not hoarding toilet paper or anything like that but we started you know we started ordering food that would last in case we had problems getting food in the city and stuff like that so so we started to get into kind of a you know preservation mode me and my wife and stayed inside and you know (laughs) checking the news all the time so it was kind of it was a hectic and pretty chaotic month there the first one yeah a lot of people in the uk started bulk buying toilet paper and pasta and other things and every time i got there i just see not a lot of pasta left not a lot of toilet paper left and even people just stocking up on beer as well and thinking are you planning to have a party because you can't have people come over so <laughs> yeah. what the hell 
Uh, it was a bit like, okay, it was fine during January. It was fine during February. Yep. Then hearing that the guys from Testament got the virus, they're doing better now, so that's good. And then March, all of a sudden it's like, you must stay home. I'm like, stay home. Yeah. What? And then all of a sudden, all the gigs that I started, all the gigs that I had planned ended up getting cancelled. So I was just like, oh, fine. Yeah. That's fine. I'll just stay home and do nothing. But uh, life. Yeah. Is yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Exactly. What can you do? But it's also, mm-hmm. it was kind of a, it was discouraging to like see one show after the other shut down too you know like all right we can't we can't travel anywhere now it's it's a done deal you know yeah, like I, you know i have my my family back in sweden like my parents they're past 70 years old i was more worried for them you know my aunt and ended up in a uh drug-induced coma on a, a ventilator for a month oh, man. my granddad died from the virus he was like plus, you know so he he just you know he that went pretty quickly but so sad you know he died by himself in the hospital after being admitted like 20 not even 24 hours after he got admitted to the hospital they got him in an ambulance and you know and i'm stuck here and i'm like worried about you know my parents who are old too that like you know and i can't travel you can't travel <laughs> to see and that's the problem yeah exactly so uh well you know it, it was pretty gnarly but um you know mm. I, I'm happy my aunt is all right. She's, but she's, she's one of them long haulers. So she, you know, she had to learn how to walk again and all that. So. Yeah. So I worry about my parents as well. well my mom works with the NHS here in the UK. Okay. And she deals with patients. Like well, she, I think she's changed her job since, but she used to go to people's houses and see how they were and do other things there as like, checkups and stuff well, i think she's changed her job since my brother's changing his job because he worked as a mental health nurse uh, but i think he's changing to something else which is a little bit less stressful um, my dad's type 2 diabetic he's had his first vaccine jab already so i have he's got that done my other hand's got both my hands hopefully both got their jabs done my mum's already got hers done and my brother and i'm now making mine because obviously they work for the nhs it's like get the jab you get the jab done yeah and at the same time you get them done as those over 80 over 70 over 60 and again my condolences to you for losing your granddad as well that yeah thanks really sucks i lost my granddad well nearly 11 years ago so i know how it feels to lose someone like that yeah it's someone it's not died. fun but you know it's not fun i'm, I'm sorry it's to not, hear about it's not granddad. fun but you got to remember the good times they had with them, not all the, not the last moments of. Yeah, exactly. The life. No, it, and that's the thing too. I, I remember I called him for his birthday in February, like mid February, and also I talked to him, and he was in a happy place. When I visited Sweden in January, I went to see him. That's good. Uh, yeah, so so at least I got to see him, you know. And, but it's kind of it's like it's just it's scary but it's scared that it, it, everything went happened so fast and we got to be honest to like not to walk into any political discussions but no. i mean the nursing homes I, I mean it's not only here in in the u.s or in england or or in sweden or, or wherever I mean, pretty, pretty much everywhere the it's protocol is no. that great so we just have to make sure that maybe the lesson is learned you know because yeah. i because i remember like i was talking to my mom i was like so granddad he lives in his own apartment he has you know staff coming in to to help him cook or or you know do laundry or whatever and they were not given any ppe uh you know if they were a little bit sick they they have a, a lot of old folks that they have to run in between to help out you know the, the workload is it's crazy and if the protocol is not coming from there their boss to say that you need to wear PPE, here's your PPE and you don't take this off and you, you know, you sanitize and, and you know, if, if you don't have that protocol, it's not that weird that, that a lot of old people died. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's very annoying to it's annoying, you know, yep. see that mistakes have been done that way. It could have, you could have saved lives if you would have been a little bit more, you know, uh, 
don't know, considerate of the people you actually <laughs> make money on helping out, you know? Yeah, that's true. But I've, I've said this saying so many times before, life's a bitch and everything else. Yeah. Because it can be. But um, luckily, we got this fantastic music that we're both into, which yeah. I'm going to ask you about just to get off the whole Corona thing, because that could just go and suck it as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And uh, you, so you said you live in New York now. How long have you been living there for? Mm, since 2000, oh, five years now. Um, so we, we moved out of the city just across the Hudson River to oh. New Jersey, actually, uh, just before New Year. Um, yeah, it was time to, you know, get a, a better apartment and, and so on. So we, we took the leap. Yeah, which is great i love it here it's it's a little bit calmer you know and everything but it's very close to the city still that's cool yeah i went to new york in 2002 when i was still when i was a little kid mm -hmm. i loved it i love to go again but obviously can at the moment yeah no, it's of... a great it's a great city you know it's yeah, a, it is a great city, definitely yeah and uh what well, we all know you're not from new york originally you're from sweden and Sweden is a beautiful country, I do have to say. I don't have to say. I want to say. <laughs> That's the word. I want to say. I've only been to Stockholm, but still. What I've heard uh, about it's, Sweden, it's beautiful, is beautiful place. things I mean, there. Yeah, the whole, the whole country is beautiful and, and it's different. You know, north, south, east, west. I mean, it's, it's a very oblong country and, <laughs> and there's, you know, way colder, more snow up up north and yeah. you know a bit more continental down in the south in malmo uh, like that city for instance yeah. so i mean it's different it, and it's beautiful pretty well pres well preserved country and, yeah, and good infrastructure and so on I i'm just a little bit sad right now to see that they're not getting th their vaccinations done because it's like really uh, go, go, yeah it, it's going very slow over there i mean uh, and again it, the, the, the only reason i'm talking about this and going back to this <laughs> pandemic crap is that i just want to see the, the the vaccinations you know tick up so that maybe we could do a couple of shows this year you know that would be great because i would yeah. love to see scandinavia death fest happen again because i really yeah, enjoyed I mean, it last time because in september we have this uh this is going to be a great festival in in stockholm uh, called mackin fest and it's the guy who did the dismember beer for the scandinavia death fest that was a nice beer yeah right i drank so too this... much of that and bought too much of it and that broke my, that broke my bank <laughs> oh really yeah it was kind of weird to see that well, the, uh, the, the venue in stockholm they they overpriced that beer okay, and that yeah. was out of our control we did they were not we didn't okay them to do that and we couldn't really say anything about it because we should have thought about them trying to you know overprice the beer mm, which we didn't yeah, I saw it i saw the price i was like how much? Fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> I know, and and you know, it, and still it's sold out, which is weird. But uh, I I didn't feel too great about that. I don't. But, but because it? also it's like yeah, but if someone think that it's us doing that that we're trying to make, we didn't make any money off of that beer. We just uh -huh. did it for a fun thing for for the occasion, you know. Just for the so occasion. Can, yeah. So I, I, you know what? I if people want to pay for it and everything, but I just think it's a little bit you know greedy of the venue to do something like <laughs> yeah. that especially not even asking us you know but then again it, it was a big project you know doing the first two shows back together in a very long time i'm the manager the production manager the tour manager for the band too so wow you know, you all I, busy, man. yeah so th <laughs> therefore it was kind of hard to you know and i i helped arrange the the pre-party at the, the baser club where leak and impure played on the on that was that the thursday yeah i was gonna i think me and my mate came the thursday to sweden we stopped over in amsterdam first because mm -hmm. we were KOM. but we didn't have any proper food because the i think the stewards were on strike or something oh or the food people that supply food for the planes were on strike i don't know so all i got was coffee and waffles which wasn't which is not all bad but still <laughs> I would like to have like at least a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but it didn't matter. Um, then got to Stockholm, got to the boat, the red boat, which is a you know you probably know the red boat is a hostel. Mm -hmm. So we stayed on not on the actual red boat, but the boat next to it. Okay. Got 
got there, took pictures of the room because I thought, this is cool, much better than the crap I've seen lately, but there you go. <laughs> and then went to System Bootlugger, uh-huh. and beer and mead, had a swig of mead every morning. New Joe wouldn't do that, but since I was on the holiday, I'm going to be seeing one of my favourite bands. I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> Go all in. Go all in. And yeah, there's, um, I, I, I was trying to think where the venue was, but I thought, I think I'm just going to do the main event when it starts. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know where it was. So I went. we went to Omnipol- Omnipolo in, instead. Oh, that's a good place too. Yeah, I I really like that. It's got it's got a bar and a pizzeria, so I was happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, yes, finally done with Beer the and pizza. <laughs> yeah, diet. That's my diet, and staying up until about three o'clock in the morning every single night. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny that you mentioned the red boat because that boat has been around since you know before I was born. I think I I remember as I must have been like four or five years old. I went on that boat because i had a a friend whose dad had a their own boat not that far the the closest like uh, yeah marina that's close to to that red boat the same strip of that oh cool canal you know so we i remember going there i must have been like four or five years old i had like a soda on that boat. i don't know what why we were there or something but you know, going past that in the car with your dad, you would always see that boat. It's, it's sticking out still like a sore thumb and it looks pretty cool. But yeah, I remember cause... it's like, oh, and it's still around. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, because I remember just getting off the train station, one of the train stations, which was across the road from it. I know there's one that you can get off of and you can walk down the street to it. But Yeah. We thought, walk up the bridge and then cross over, but apparently there was no bridge connecting over to that side, so we had to go all the way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right, this is fine. This is fine. It's not freezing. It kind of is freezing. Yeah. But There's it, so much water everywhere, right? So much water. You're surrounded by water. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and I just saw the red boat. I thought, okay, everything looks like grey and beige or some other colors and that just sticks out because it's red yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and red is cool because a lot of bands use red in their band logos oh yeah and artwork and speaking of music where did your music journey begin and how did it get into this fantastic music that takes our minds off of things called metal what well, well you know i was i don't know i I was really young when I started picking up on music. My, my dad played a lot of music in the car while we were out, you know. He, he loved to drive and do like, if we went on vacation, we would drive, you know, no matter if it was down in Spain, we would drive from Sweden down to Spain. You know, he loved doing that kind of vacation and, and it was probably cheaper. We, we couldn't afford flying, as I recall when I was a kid, but, you know, we, we still saw a lot of stuff. So he was playing, always playing music in the car. And when he was cooking, uh, so I, you know, I got into Elvis when I was like five years old. Then I, when I started school, I, I met a friend or I made a school like friend who, who had a cousin who were in, had been into Kiss, you know, so he gave my friend his Kiss albums and we thought that was cool, you know, obviously. So from, from there on, it was just like going into more extreme forms of, of metal, you know, after Kiss, you know, he's, realized it was a band called Motorhead. And then after that, Metallica came, open up new doors, Venom, Merciful Fate. Um, so when I, you know, when, when I turned 13, I attended junior high and I met Nicky Anderson and he was, you know, a punk rocker then. I was a kind of a metalhead. So, but we were the only ones who were kind of like, you know, having long hair and not looking like the regular kids i guess so we hit it off and everything and he had a band so i he asked if i could join yeah i joined us played a little bit of guitar and then you know two years into junior high we were like you know starting to get deep into the, the extreme metal from the us you know like death and also swedish bands like Bathory and the english scene was still very you know you know, even the punk scene and the, the hardcore scene, like Discharge and some American yeah. hardcore bands, you know, we, we just looked further and further, you know, for new extreme music. And then 
you know, Nick has always been very creative and, and very driven. So he started Nihilist. And after that, I was like, I want to start my own band too. And so we started this member with me and David and Robert. That, yeah. That's how it kind of unfolded. Yeah. Because uh, when I first heard about you guys, this was like 2008, probably. The song that I heard was Dreaming in Red. That's how I knew about you guys. And then I thought, they got to have something else. And then I found the first album, which I'll show in a minute. And then I saw that, oh, they formed and then they split up for a bit. Mm. You Because you were in another band, which I hopefully a lot of people will know. If not, then where, what rock have you been living under, <laughs> so to speak? And because uh, d- sometimes death metal gets some people like death metal. Yeah, I'll come back to this later. And they, some of them don't ever come back. But I remember getting a death metal the first time. It was Cannibal Corpse. That's how I broke in. And then Entomb was the first band from Sweden I ever checked out. Mm-hmm. And I thought, there's got to be more. And then I found you guys. And then Unleashed and Grave and... Then there was bloodbath because I spoke to someone over MSN Messenger when that was a thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I found another band that you were in with um, members of obviously Dismember and Michael Amott, who went on to join Carcass. And it's Carnage. There we go. And this is the only album you guys ever released. And of course, you've got demos on here, The Day Man Lost. There's actually a band that's got that same name, and I think it's because of that demo. And uh, obviously, because this member formed, I'm trying to remember now, my head's all over the place, because <laughs> it always is. And uh, yeah, it says 1988 to 1989, you guys were active. And then obviously, this band was still, this band was going. Mm-hmm. Um, where did the name Carnage come from? You know, that's a question for Michael. Uh, I I don't remember exactly now. Uh, well, especially the <laughs> the Carnage. I remember everything from this member stuff, but that's probably because I, you know, was the you know I was kind of coming up with most ideas in the beginning for this members. It's easier to remember, but because Carnage, I. I don't know. They, he he was very like influenced by Discharge and and cool. yeah yeah, and he was friends with the guys in Carcass too. Um, he's yeah. of English descent, so you know yeah, he yeah. had friends in England and all that. You know, so it, it was a little bit different than I guess us in Sweden who had like both English and American like a little bit more influence. We were before the Swedish kind of death metal bands exploded, we were, you know, we had heavy metal bands and thrash bands, but they were not making a huge impact, I, in my opinion, so far, you know, even though we had a lot of good bands, but it was a little bit different, I think, for us. He had a, but he had the connection to to the English scene in a, in a different way. He knew the guys in Napalm yeah, Death and, this and all that, so. And Napalm Death even played Sweden back in the 80s, because I've seen footage and by the looks of it, they went down really well. Like, oh yeah, really well. It was fucking awesome when they played. It was like it was huge back then because we were really young. But that was like our music. It wasn't like an older generation that we like inherited their music. No, we were there. We were the first kind you of were the... fans of Napalm Death in Sweden. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> and yeah, then we had definitely. home band too, but we were like you know part of that scene not only as band members but as fans too you know? as fans as well because you're seeing a band from my neck of the woods well not bristol that birmingham mm. but from england shall i say from yeah. my from my home country and just going to a place that they never thought they would go to and all of a sudden they got like a packed venue full of crazy fans being like yeah scum and from enslavement to obliteration and you know that's basically the footage i found when it was those two albums that were popular yeah and uh I mean, it, it, it also something that it's i feel that myself it's easy to forget sometimes that 
it wasn't only the thing that it was kind of DIY and it was kind of punk, but it also had, you know, elements of, of metal and extreme metal, but, but the punk scene, but it was also the interacting. Yeah. Cause I mean, it was more like, I mean, yeah, we knew about black flag and everything, but that was kind of distant, you know, but when we, you went to a Napalm Death show, it was you you were also part of the show a little bit because you went up you stage that you were allowed to do that you, it wasn't like you didn't have any barriers or anything it was like a punk show but you know you were also not only looking at the band but you saw your friend doing the craziest jump off the you know the the yep. pa stack or someone has had a different you know a very specific way of stage diving like we had one guy who always went back down first and stuff like that you know that that oh that's this guy jumping you know you 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 were kind of interacting into the show somehow that and i think that when you're like 16 15 14 years old i mean that's pretty important because you feel that you're part of it you're not just spectator spectator from the sidelines i mean i remember seeing anthrax and they played in stockholm for the among the living tour great you know that was the first kind of like huge mosh pit i ever been in and that was awesome but then when you were part of a napalm death show you were like stage diving you were headbanging you were marching you were doing all this shit and you were kind of nobody was like beating anyone up if someone hurt someone it was always by mistake it was always in, in good you know spirit no yeah. one every, everybody helped each other up stuff like that yeah uh, well yeah if someone does get knocked over in the pit you pick him back up yeah, I've but today, if you if you look at you look at the the beat down hardcore shit today, it's yeah, no, no, no yeah, I got a mate if it, who every time we were in a pit, if he saw that going on, he would just automatically push him out because mm -hmm. yeah. if it was at like a death metal show, no, 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 exactly, you can't do it at a death metal show. If I saw that someone waving their arms, doing karate kicks and shit, and like, yeah. This ain't I mean, hardcore, this is death metal. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, I get it. Like, I'm old now. I get it. I don't, you know, I've been yeah, doing tours. And we've, you know, I've been, been doing sound for bands too. I've been doing nights with 20 of those bands and you can't really cross the floor because suddenly someone's going to come from someone's out of nowhere and, and you get a cry. fucking boot to the head. Yeah, and I just yeah, going to beat you in the face. Yeah, and I've seen people being hurt really bad. You know, and It's not cool. But it's like, okay, I get it. I I admit to it. I don't understand that at all because I don't, if, you know, I do my fair share of, of boxing myself for, for, you know, for staying in shape. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I've done some sparring and all that. And, and that's one thing, but it's like, if, if you do shit like that and then you're not going to take responsibility for it, that's where I don't understand it. Uh, and I used to stay a lot away from a lot of those shows anyway. The shows I go yeah. to are mainly death metal or thrash metal, any metal, death metal, thrash metal, black metal, doom metal. I like the doom metal shows because you don't really mosh the doom. You just stand there headbanging. Unless they're mixed of death and doom, then you might get a bit of a mosh pit now and then. But, uh, yeah. Hardcore shows, no. They're just there. To, because I got hit. I got hit at the side of the face by some dumbass. At one show, and I was just like, it was, uh, who was it? I think it was, if I remember correctly, it was Lamb of God. They were headlining. This was 2009. They had Whitechapel on tour with them. And some idiot started waving his arms around, and I was just like, oh, I really want to hit him, but if I do, I'm going to get kicked out. Yeah. So I didn't. It might have been, no, it was Trivium, sorry. It was Trivium. Really? Trivia. Yeah, Whitechapel with trivia. I don't know. But yeah, the less about those hardcore dancer kids, the better. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, like I, I just feel that, you know, it, you are you don't have control over what you're doing, and therefore I think it's wrong. Uh, yeah. You know. That's it. And uh well to get back on to uh, well, before I get back onto Carnage, who came up with the name Dismember? Uh, it was actually uh, Nicky Anderson who came up with that. And he, oh. he drew the logo. Oh, both of course. Of yeah, it says on the talent. 
yeah so no he um he was very like you know helpful and not just helpful he was very influential on on this member in the beginning because you know we were hanging out a lot we were you know he helped us out when we didn't have a bass player he would step in and play bass oh, cool, so. it sounded a little bit better and so on so you know it, he he helped us out a lot in the beginning yeah that's great because well, because you knew each other at school so mm -hmm. it's him helping out someone helping out a friend of his from school yeah yeah which is great and you know well he started out as a punk and then became metalhead I put he's probably just a mix of everything metalhead punk fucking fucking hard rocker whatever because he's in Lucifer yeah which great band because I remember yeah. in the central central century media live stream this isolation festival Lucifer was on and I saw him I thought I'm used to him playing like that <laughs> I know he's yeah, playing yeah, like yeah. traditional rock beats. I thought, well, this guy's really good. And he was actually at Scandinavia Death Fest, but I didn't see him. I had a picture of him and I was just like, damn it. <laughs> but I got a picture of you, so that's great. <laughs> and um, Matty and Dave Davis. We'll get on to that yeah. in a bit. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's that's one of my biggest regrets Like during that weekend was that I was so busy that I didn't really have time to you know, hang out and chat more uh, with people, you know, because so many people traveled so far. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and, and I feel a little bit bad that I didn't have, you know, more time to just hang out with people, but it, it was so hectic, you know. It's, it, was, it was a hectic, it was a hectic weekend. It but, was. And, and, you know, we, we hadn't rehearsed. We, I went like eight days ahead and we just rehearsed like 12 hours every day up until yeah. the show so um, and then we had to take photos we had some interviews to do and stuff and, you know, yeah yeah it was like not, not a lot of sleep every night uh until that because at that point you hadn't been a band since about what 2008 yeah 2000 yeah 2007 i quit 2007 the band, they, I think they broke up 2010 or 11. I don't remember exactly. But. This is why I have my phone so I can remember all this yeah. shit. Because I have so much information building up in my head. I mix it up. Let's see. 1990 to 2011. Oh, 2011 then. Okay. <laughs> and then yeah. reformed in January of 2019. Mm -hmm. And then obviously you saw that post and I was like, there's no way I'm missing this. Dismember in Sweden. Come on. <laughs> if you have to be to miss that yeah it was it was a good place to start but yeah great yeah no i enjoyed it enjoyed it every enjoyed both sets awesome Just absolutely loved it and but before we talk about more about dismember let's talk about carnage Can oh i said that wrong carnage <laughs> and uh Obviously, this is like a re-release because it's got the demos on it. Because I seen the original covers where this is a lot smaller and it's at the yeah. top around here. Exactly. Yep. And uh, I keep I'm trying to think I'm trying to remember if this was Dan Seagrave. Yes, it was Dan Seagrave because I, I was looking at it I was like, yeah, that's Dan C that's Dan Seagrave all over it. Oh yeah, not the logo. <laughs> the art. No, exactly. I think okay. that was the, I I think it was Jeff from Carcass who drew the logo. Just say in the book. Um, probably gonna. Okay, it doesn't say the logo. Who did the logo? But I'm guessing it was Jeff. Had to be yeah, Jeff. Had to be Jeff because that looks like something Jeff would do. Yeah, exactly. And um, it's pretty bad that he didn't get credit for that. But that's you should also get credit for that because it's out logo. of our control we we haven't seen a dime for that album we haven't seen a statement for that album we have yeah none, none of the band members have seen any or we, we oh. you know we had a when we did the original artwork we had a little bit of a control over it but eric more more or less just did what they thought what they thought they was right at the time yeah, yeah. but uh yeah, no, that's not, that, that actually sucks. But apart from all that negative stuff, this is an absolutely great album, and I think is very underrated because I don't think this gets talked about very much. No, but, but then again, anyway. it's it's not it's not that weird since we we did maybe 
how many shows did we even play? And that was before the album came out. Maybe we did like two or three shows all together. And long before the, the album was out, uh, Michael had already joined Carcass. So, I mean, the, the album came out in November of 1990, but we recorded it in what, February 1990? It was- Wow. Yeah, so it took a long while until it came out. Mm-hmm. And once it came out, the, we weren't playing any shows to support it. So it's not that weird. Not that weird, but yeah, not weird that it hasn't been talked about, but I think it should get talked about because it is a, it's a great album. I wouldn't have bought it otherwise. Oh, I, I'm glad you like it. I mean, I, I think it was good for what a bunch of teenagers, um, you know, came up with. So yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a great, great album. And obviously is the back of it. You're in the middle. <laughs> mm-hmm. And there's a, that's it, there he is. Then we got, uh, well, Amot's on, Michael's right there. Wearing his sunglasses, looking all cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, Another familiar face, Johnny, who joined Entomb for a bit. Yep. And he was only on the demos of Carnage. He wasn't actually on the album. If it, he, was, he didn't play bass on the album, did he? Uh, he did. Oh, he did? Not, yeah, I mean, he played, I don't recall exactly how much, but he might have played on one song or two. Right. Um, yeah. I know I played bass on one song. Yeah. Michael played bass. David played bass too. So, oh, so you all just took it in turns. Yeah. Because um... for the part, because you know the album too. It was like many of the songs were like old dismember songs that we <laughs> recorded oh, that so we yeah. hadn't really. Yeah, we hadn't really had time to rehearse them even. Um, uh, some of the songs were completely newly written songs by me and Michael, but. Um, Apart from that, you know, the some of the dismember tracks, like only me and David knew those. And the new Carnage stuff, only me and Michael knew. Uh, so, you know. So that probably made sense why certain people play bass on certain songs, I guess. And- yeah. And, and, you know, yeah, we had, a, it's not like we had a, a budget, a good budget for recording it. You know, we, we recorded and mixed the Cornish album in like seven days, I think. And it was like, you know, you were in the studio for like 12 to 14 hours a day to get it done. Wow. So it, it wasn't like, it, it was like, oh yeah, let's think about this for a week and get back into the studio. No, everything was done in one stretch, fast and furious. And if you couldn't play your parts, someone else who could would play oh, it. That, that's how it went down back then, you know, when you didn't have time to rehearse because we knew that we all the bands back then rehearsal was key to make it sound good but even then we realized we were not living in the same city all of us either it was very Mm -hmm. like not very permanent setup so we we did what we could and we knew we we just booked the studio and the the label wanted us to record and we were like yeah we have to get this done let's get it done and of course it's the album was recorded at a very famous studio within sweden sunlight Yes, videos. and uh, obviously I've been reading a book lately called The History of Finnish Death Metal. I got the Swedish book, which I should actually pick up and show. But um, Amorphous was meant was mentioned in this book, and they recorded their first two albums at this studio. Mm-hmm. And Dark Throne did that with Soul Side Journey because they were very big on what you guys were doing at the time, mm-hmm. which. I don't blame him. It's a great sound, the Swedish death metal sound with the uh, obviously the HM2 pedal, which I actually own, which I'll get in a minute. And uh, with this release, because um, I looked in it, it got remastered in two thousand, I think. Hang on, yep, remastered here in the UK in two thousand mm-hmm. with the demos and uh, there's some more pictures, and obviously mm-hmm. there's a uh, different guy there or was that still matty mm. obviously got different because i think you've had different members over the years in this band yeah so this, this is like the this is like the old lineup with the old drummer and that's johan singing in the johan, band that's it. yeah so yeah johan was in the band for a while because i think i've seen an old band picture where he was in it and his hair most of his hair's covering his face yeah. You know, like sat down on a 
<laughs> railing or something. Yeah. Which no, obviously this picture the picture's not in here, so I can't show it. Unless it's so oh it is. Oh there you are, yeah, exactly. So that's that's I guess for the first demo. Yeah, lineup. there he is, his hair's covering his face and we can't see can't, well we can see Michael's face. Uh yeah. okay, you're gonna have to point out which one you are. <laughs> Uh, I'm not in that. You're not in that. Oh, you weren't in the band yet, no, I guess. No, because I, I joined the band just before recording the second demo. Ah, uh, the second demo being... Oh, crap, I'm looking at the book again. Infestation of Evil. Infestation of Evil. So, great, great song. Yeah, so, so Michael had some new songs, and the drummer was, like, not feeling it anymore, so he was asking me, like, would you, mind, would you like, consider coming down and join the band? This was in the fall of 1989 and I was working, I had quit school and everything and, you know, I felt like this member wasn't really moving as fast as I wanted to and he had all the connections and everything. So I said yes and, you know, we I went down there, we rehearsed for a little bit, recorded that second demo and then more or less got the the go from, from Jeff of Carcass who was like the Necrosis label manager, which was like a Oh. Uh, yeah like a sub label of of eric really that we actually signed with so uh, he was kind of like well do you have material to record an album we were like yeah sure yeah, you know, we we yeah so so we were like oh let's let's try to do this so we i moved back to stockholm where i had a rehearsal space and i you know i i got michael a job at my workplace and he moved up to stockholm lived with me and my parents and uh we started like you know looking to record an album so it was pretty everything went pretty fast back then you 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 know restless kids you know we were like we're not waiting to see where it is no we're gonna no, take we're gonna, we're gonna record yeah. an album and we're gonna get yeah. out <laughs> yep exactly and um speaking of this album well before we get on to that where is an band picture mm-hmm and uh, something said by uh, Michael Amott about the album. Yeah. Uh, there we go, Eric, of course. Big label. It's based out of Nottingham. Mm -hmm. I'm doubting myself again. but Because uh, <laughs> if people go on Metal Archives, you'll see this split with another album mm -hmm. by Cadaver, Hallucinating yep. Anxiety. How did that happen? Again, it was, I guess, uh, I don't know if, if it was Jeff and Necrosis or if it was Eric who decided on doing it. I don't, because it was also like, I think that was for the CD, I think. And this is back yeah. in 1990 and the CD record was up and coming. But this was back in the day when you actually put bonus tracks on a CD to promote the CD over the the actual vinyl record, which is mm. to, today that seems kind of weird and like you're almost smirking at it now. But back then, that's how you did it. And you know, the labels back then were like, "Well, we need we need you know bonus tracks for the CD." Everybody put bonus tracks on the CD, yeah, cool. just to promote the, the format, I guess. And, you know, so I think that that's why they did it. You know, they could get Cadaver and Carnage on the same CD. You bought the CD, you got two albums from two bands. Yeah, I just saw, I thought, you know, bands need you do a split if they're just going to record some tracks and then put them on the split. I didn't think they did that with albums. I, I guess either Cadaver or carnage I, I know carnage we didn't have any more songs than the ones we put on the album so we didn't have any bonus material i mean and and back then you weren't thinking about putting old demos on it because it would be just some of the same songs would be on it but different ver versions but that came later i guess mm. so i i think maybe that was a reason for it too that they we didn't have any extra material to put as bonus for for the cd format well well and so if people were wondering why that why that happened yeah. <laughs> there you go yeah, exactly that's why so you're not scratching your heads and being all confused and wondering why the hell are there two albums doing a split 
I, I thought it was a little bit weird back then, but it's also like, ha, I'm not in control of, of, of this on, on that level, you know? Well, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's it. So I was just, because I just wanted that, because I thought, when I first saw it, I thought, well, the only person that's going to know is someone from any of the bands. So I thought I'd ask you yeah. that and see what your opinion was on it. Yeah, I, I, I have to admit, my memory of that is not the best. So there are probably other people who remember this better but i i just recall it being a little bit weird but then again you were like that band wasn't active anymore when the album came out so it's not that i cared that much uh, about it. so well yeah you didn't really care at that point so, and then obviously the band disbanded okay i said band then disbanded the band split up mm-hmm. in 1991 on if I remember correctly, was it nine ninety one? No, 1990. It was just after the the album was recorded and done. Oh wow! <laughs> so done the album. That was it. Yeah. That carnage is there, but yeah, but gone. Yeah. Done. But you got an album pretty much out, and then people can check out if they so desire. And I do recommend you do because. In some very underrated death metal. And speaking of cottage, I got a patch on my jacket. Oh, nice. <laughs> I had to fit it somewhere, but it's in between Benediction, Autopsy, Cancer, and Demigod. Nice. And I got this member patch as well, which is the one I got at Scandinavia Death Fest. Oh, cool. You're, yeah, you're just under. Aspects and this member guy. I thought. I'll put these two together. Yeah, that's that's a good combo too. It's a good combo. I like it. And uh, I've got Demilic. Demi- yeah. Pertinence. A my... Massacre too. What? Massacre. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. And my mate's band. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all a custom. They're, they're from Bristol. Sweet. And uh, what is like this band? Oh, cool. Well, two Carbon. more. And Necrophobic. Oh, well. Yeah, I'm... You're not playing around. I'm not playing around. I'm not playing around when, I, when I'm putting these patches on new, no, no, and it's not on the bed properly. But I'm, well, I'm going to have to get the, the Swedish death metal book before we continue more about this member. Yeah. Um, hang on. Uh, I've not read this book in ages. Uh, bloody jacket. <laughs> uh, got the book. And one more other thing. My room's a bit of a mess. <laughs> um, obviously, the Swedish death metal sound would not be so out there if it wasn't for one little pedal. Yep. And I'm happy I got this. <laughs> and the, How did you get that? Um, I got it from a website called Reverb. Okay. And it was on there, and I was like, So and how much was it? It's about 140 something. Okay. About 140 something pounds. And I got the Japanese make. Oh, nice. Not the yep. Taiwanese make. Someone says, oh, if you're going to get that pedal, get the Japanese one. Yeah. And uh, of course, loved it. Loved the pedal, tested it because I got a death metal band. Not on sorting out and that's part of it <laughs> gotcha. that's what my influences are from obviously entombed your band grave um any other swedish death metal band i can think of because <laughs> yeah, like too it. many <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um and if you want to learn more about swedish death metal people and i think fred will also recommend this book Absolutely. That's that's a great book. By uh, Daniel... How do you say his last name? <laughs> Ekerot. Ekerot. See, that's why I need a native Swede to help me out with this. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> my Swedish ain't that good. It's alright, not too much. It, it is a kind of a, a weird language when you... When you look, if, if you speak English and then you look at the Swedish language, some some things can throw you off pretty hard. Yeah, because 
a mate of mine, Alex, who went to Sweden with me, we got, we, we were just wandering around and trying to figure out what the hell we're doing, what time the boats or coaches or buses or trains were. And he kept saying, for fun. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? And he's like, it says, what the fuck? Oh! <laughs> and I kept using it, and I think that's the only thing I can say properly. <laughs> for fun. For fun. Or, um, <laughs> or, um, um, what was it? Dear Gordon. Or Dear Gordon, how do you say it? Dear Gordon? Dear Gordon. How do you say it? Dear Gordon. Dear Gordon. Not Dear Gordon. Why do I keep saying that? Did you... I say Johan, I don't say the J. You don't say you don't say that. You're good. Thank you for correcting me. This is yeah, yeah, no problem. It's Thank just you. funny because it's a place and a and a football and ice hockey yeah, team. Too. Ice hockey team, which I saw little bits on YouTube. Yeah, you're you're good. You're good. Yeah, exactly. You're good. I'm trying to learn it because I like to say I just like how the Swedish say there. Yeah, you and you can say uh, you go down for farm. You want me to say that now? Yeah. <laughs> you say that again slowly. You go down. You go down for fun. You go down for for fun. Mm -hmm. I just said it. <laughs> so then, then you practically say you go down. The, then you mean the team. It, oh. The the team. God damn it. The team. God damn it. <laughs> okay. So you go down for fun. That means like fun. the team. You go down. Damn it. And well, thank you, thank you for the. Thank you for the lesson. I really, really appreciate that because I'm trying to get back at my Swedish and I got Duolingo to try and help me out with that. Yeah, my, my wife was doing that for a while too. Like, you know, she had this app and everything, but everything was so stupid. And this is a couple of years ago and she gave up on it because it was so stupid. It was like <laughs> sentences that didn't make any sense. And, you know, it's like, uh, but, you know, it, it was just weird. Maybe that those apps are better now, but. Well, maybe. But yeah. it's better to actually learn these from someone who is actually from that country, <laughs> such as True. yourself. I don't know why I said Diego, and I was like, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, I understood it. You understood it, but you were like, I know how it's said. I'm like, yeah, you, you can shut up. <laughs> but, but it's also Swedish can be a little bit tricky because it's it also like, tricky, yeah. Because if you say Diego, then you that's how you say it properly. but when you speak, you never say it like you go down. You say you go. You, oh, right. yeah. Do you, you compress it so you don't you get rid of some of the consonants? So you said just you go. Uh, okay. Look, because it is a bit it's, of it's a Stockholm. It's it's a location in Stockholm, and therefore when you speak in a Stockholm kind of accent, then you're kind of losing some of the consonants. It's kind of hard to explain, but that, so that's why. If you know, if you read you go down, that's how you would read it when you see it in writing. But when you talk, you're not reading it out of a book and you're just talking about that place or that team, uh -huh. then it's not going to sound the same. And that's, you know, that's something I had with my wife a lot that when she was trying to get on the Swedish train, she was like, but why do you suddenly say it different? Because this is not how I read it. No, exactly. You... We're, we're shortening it and compressing it. Yeah, because that's how you grew up yes. saying it. So exactly. And every country's different. And I've always found the sweet I always found the Swedish language fascinating anyway, because of how you how you said a lot of your words and how sometimes you would roll what would be an R sometimes. Yeah. Because you do a lot of R rolling in Sweden. There's Norway that does it a lot. I'm pretty sure Denmark does it quite a bit, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, they 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 overemphasize the the R's and the the weird consonants. Oh, you come down, you come down to the Bristol. We we say our, our R's come out more. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. More, I mean more. Like instead of saying butter, we yeah. go butter. Yeah, butter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like pirate, you know, pirates butter. Yeah, and then butter. in some parts it's butter. So um, I mean, how yeah? How would you say it in Newcastle? You say what? Say butter. If if you're from Newcastle, who how from would Newcastle, you? Newcastle. I think it just. I think it's like. I had two guys from Newcastle recently <laughs> from the band Live Burial, and I didn't uh, ask him that. Uh, <laughs> I think it's just butter. Yeah. No, no. But we say butter or um, 
the drink cider, we say Zyder. We change Zider. the S. We change it to a Z. Huh. Zyder. That's interesting. I know it's, it's I know it's pretty just if you spend on spend enough time down here you'll you'll get the gist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh <Proper gist. laughs> uh, well, um some worlds are speaking death metal on this chat, we're also speaking languages. Yes, exactly. And um you correct me on how to say you're you god you know, damn it, you're gone. Yeah, there you go. You're god and um because when me and my mate were on there before we carry on with dismember stuff, we found the ABBA Museum. Oh, nice. And my mum's a big ABBA fan, so I had to take a picture. Didn't go in it, because me and my mate had plan stuff planned. But the pretty last expensive, thing, too, as I've heard. Was that? It's pretty expensive, too. I didn't, I didn't even check to see how much it was, but I thought, I need to spend my money on merch, food, yeah. beer, obviously, yeah. <laughs> train travel. Yeah. yeah. Because I got, I pretty much figured out your train systems pretty quickly, which ones I had to get off of and which ones I had to get on to get on to a certain stop, weren't you? And um, because the last place we went to before heading to the venue, the last night you guys played, was um, my mate says it is right. I wanted to see if it's right. Um, Skansen. Yeah. Skansen. Yeah. Which That's is like. I don't know how to describe it to people. It's like a, it's got animals in it and it's got like different sorts of architecture. I saw runes and the stone for runes on it. I was like, I'm home. Yeah. No, it's it's um it's like this it's old like historical. historic kind of op open air zoo. And it's beautiful. And, and and yeah, it's like you know, they display like old houses from back when in Sweden, you know, like from the 1800s, 1700s, and that yeah. they have preserved and, and put up there. So it's yeah, it's like yeah. a yeah, it it is really nice. That's like yeah, favorite absolutely. place. Yeah, you know, when you were a kid, that's like an activity that wasn't too expensive and you would meet up with people there and so on. So. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful because before we went to that. We went to the Nordic Museum. Mm, that's nice. There was an expedition on, so we went there, and then we saw how the world was changing, like in terms of global warming, whatever, mm. and like what years it would get higher and what years it get lower and everything. And listening to people talk about certain histories in English and then in Swedish, so I was like, "Yeah, this is cool." And then then went to Skansen. Because I thought, well, what's this place? It's like, it's got wolves and moose and lynx and bears and wolverines and like, well, who do I go? Because funny enough, not funny enough, it's interesting because my mate Alex, who's in a folk metal band with me, talked about the lynx there and he's like, lynx? And uh, he's like, yeah, because there's a, because there's a zoo in the UK which had some of the links from Skansen go to there or vice versa. Uh. Trying to remember which now, but I think it's they come from Skansen to here, not Bristol. Okay. Something like that. There's some kind of exchange. Yeah, kind of exchange and speaking of that. Nice. And of course you guys are gonna be on the right at the oh, top yeah. because you were the main event and there's grave. Benediction. Benediction, yep. Um, General surgery. General surgery. Nuclear assault. Demodic. Unanimated. Unanimated, yeah. They, they were they were fantastic. They were. They were so good. Were hey, Jake, I got a question for you. Yes. So, so I'm going to have to take off because I have to go to the store um, yep. and get some stuff. Should we Should we do a part two or... or pick this up can we pick this up another day you think um if you have a lot of more questions yeah i got yeah very much i was just gonna show off the rest of the dismember merch that i got and uh i mean we could leave we could probably leave that to another to a second part maybe if you're up for that yeah if that yeah i'm up for it if that's okay with you i'm just seeing that i'm started running long time yeah, and it's 
I'm getting pretty late here because I was looking at because we were talking about college. Yeah, I know, I know. And you know, I mean, I can I can talk forever, so I don't mind mm-hmm. you know doing a part two if that's okay yeah, with you. Yeah, that that'd be great because I'm done that i haven't done that with anyone yet so you'll be my first one to do that with <laughs> well if it's all right with you, you yeah know? cool and uh before before leaving then i'm going to show this one off nice like an ever-flowing stream i'll quickly ask quick yeah talk properly i'll quickly ask you about how long this took to record 12 days 12 days including the mix yeah and you're all covered in blood Oh yeah, oh my God, what really? Did you, what did you Pig's do? Pig's blood too. Pig's blood, because you did a video reborn in blasphemy, and uh, yeah, we, I much covered in blood, but I totally ruined my leather pants with that pig's blood. <laughs> you and your leather pants, you bunch of <laughs> bunch of crazy nutcases. Yeah, this is the vinyl. I don't collect vinyl very much, but I thought it's on UK EM Records. So I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to show the other CDs in the next part. Yeah. Um, so, uh, well, thank you for joining in on part one of Jake's Metal Chat. Part one, episode 33, part one. See, because we never know where these chats are going to go. We can chat for ages and ages and ages. Yeah. I, you know, I, and I don't mind, I, you know, I talk a lot. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll gonna pick the yeah we talk about so the next part will be more about this member and i'll probably share the album again and we'll continue from pretty much talking about this member up to scandinavia death fest and then we will leave it there in that part and then hopefully we'll meet up again very soon when this is cool. over so thank you for uh tuning tuning in well thank you for taking part in thanks Atlanta thanks chat, for having me part. yeah it, i'm looking forward to the second part and the second part will be more about this member and other bands that he's been in as well and then who knows there might be a part three depending on how much more we talk <laughs> so yeah. i'll let fred, i'll let fred go so then i can most likely get this one up tonight and then uh we'll then discuss when we're gonna meet up again not meet up again meet up again virtually <laughs> Awesome. Sounds great, Jake. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Take care of yourself. Um, Yeah. So, um, yeah, we kind of talked a lot in this first part, and I've never done the second part before, so I'm going to get this one up tonight, mostly. Most likely, because there were so many friends I wanted to learn from his time growing up in Sweden, and and this will then go on to just more about this member, into all the way up till they split up in twenty eleven, and then reformed in twenty nineteen. Did Scandinavia Death Fest. Yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed the first part of um, episode 33. Um, for whenever we do part two, so or we might ju- I might just keep it as episode 33. Uh, Fred, Dismember, part one, and then the other one will be like episode something else. And then um, I'm gonna stop blabbering. I'm gonna just get some, get another beer or so, and um, sort out my podcast, Jake's Metal Sessions, and next I've got to do one on the Bristol metal scene and the and. Uh, list of new bands to check out and so on and so forth and there will be more jake's metal chat videos because i will have a schedule on the facebook and that will be down in the description below if you did not see it the first time i might not put it there but if i did 
I'm going to put it back down there anyway. So thank you very much for tuning in. It's quite late here. Obviously, I couldn't shout and do all this crap. But, you know, shout and do, you know, shout a lot of crap. There we go. And, um, <laughs> yeah, well, um, probably see you sometime, maybe March, maybe April, maybe even May. Who knows? Take care, guys. And look after those around you.